Hey guys, welcome. Welcome back to Interstage Window, our stream on Saturdays. That's a conversation between myself and um, and a friend, usually my co-host Landon. Say hi, Landon. Hi, Landon. And hi, everybody else watching. Hey, I see a bunch of you guys in chat. Ty, Bree, Naomi. Oh my gosh. Hey guys, I'm so glad that All you're here. <laughs> We have a fun topic. We have a fun topic for you all today. What is it that we're going to be talking about today, Landon? We are going to be talking about things we wish, uh, characters that we wish we saw more in RP. Mm -hmm. um, and all of the different tropes that we wish we saw. And basically a plea from us to you to write more of these kinds of characters. Yes, yes. So, you know, R RP is, is very saturated with specific things that you see over and over and over. And uh, and once you've been role playing for as as long as we have, uh, you start to be like, where's where's all the, the blank? You know, insert all of these things that we don't often see. So that's what we're going to talk about today. Probably going to be a, a equal part, equal parts chill and spicy today. Probably a little bit of both, right? Yeah, I mean, I think that the thing with this topic is that none of our hot takes are going to be surprising. Nope. <laughs> they're kind of they're, they're kind of recycled hot takes. At this point they're they're a little bit like on the scale of a little spicy, not too spicy. Yeah. Yeah, think about <laughs> this as a little bit of a compilation episode. <laughs> yes. Which is not a bad thing, because I think all of these topics need to be reviewed and you know, I please continue writing all of these characters that we're talking about. But I think for the most part it'll be nice to 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 revamp this and to recall out to our favorite people to be like, please play more fat people. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And we're calling out to ourselves too. Like this is also this is oh, a yeah. call out for me too, because um because I I don't do a good job of uh of doing some of the things that I wish other people did, which is very hypocritical. I should stop that. Yeah, I have I have tried to take on certain aspects as far as like um I am very conscious of of how race is being re represented in RPs yeah. more so than I have been in the past. You've always been a great uh, forefront thinker on that. I have not always been. Um, so ever since, and maybe a little bit before our, our race episode, uh, I, I've been trying to consciously change that, but there are other ways in which I can definitely approve and other ways that I should play other characters. Yeah, for sure. I think we all can. Hey Jane, so happy you're here today. And hey Katie, I can see you in the chat too. I see you in the chat too. <laughs> Hope you oh, guys Jane are ready for some opinions and we want to hear y'all's too. We want to hear y'all's too as we go through these different things today. I thought Jane was working. Is she here? Is she skiving off of work to be here with us? I hope so. Oh my god, that's amazing. <laughs> it's so special. Oh, this is this the last one. one. Oh, oh, okay, okay. After this one, she hates us. It's fine. Yeah, I mean, it is what it is. <laughs> We're pretty hateable, so can you I blame mean, her? honestly, if you <laughs> ask anybody you know, they're like, the, those two, totally hateable. <laughs> <laughs> the most problematic in the worst ways. <laughs> All right, but before we dive deep into this subject and our experiences and our opinions, Karen, what is your favorite thing of the week? Okay, all right, so here's my favorite thing of this week. Um, we're going to talk about something similar for my favorite thing, as I talked about last time, because, oh my god, y'all absolutely blew me out the water. So my favorite thing this week is Sims 2, and I'm so excited, you guys, that that's going to be our next game on Interstage Window. Y'all just, like, destroyed that goal. I tried to keep it low, because I just really didn't know if y'all would feel passionate about any of those games, but clearly, you want to see some Sims. So we're going to do a Legacy Challenge. Um, at some point when I finish Viva Pinata, it's probably going to be a few more episodes of Viva Pinata, but at some point we'll get Sims 2 started, we'll do a legacy challenge, and I think we're definitely going to start it with a Landon Sim. So Landon will be <gasps> the founder of our legacy family. <laughs> Me? Yes, Me? you! I'm so honored to have all of our <laughs> legacy babies. You are. You're gonna, we're going to have to get you, we're, you're going to have to have some babies, and um, then your babies are going to have to have babies. And we're going to yeah. do that for 10 generations. Like, I'm, I'm not going to keep score super hardcore for that, but um, but we're going to do it. We're going to get to 10 generations. That's my goal. I love it. I think that's mm -hmm. going to be awesome. 
Mm -hmm. um, and then there's the, the other two goals are still there, by the way, y'all. So what we're going to do for that is if you guys are interested in me playing those games, mm -hmm. I can potentially play one of those next after Final Fantasy X on, um, on Artistic License. So, you know, if even though those two games are not being chosen for the next um, interstage window game, you are still welcome to put your points in and I will take that as like, you just want to see that game in general and I will make sure that it happens um, at some point in artistic license. Yes, because those are fun games. I, um, I've i not seen Stardew Valley, but I've heard fun things about the Pokemon League one. Yeah, it's uh, both of them are gonna are really fun, and I'm excited for you guys to share you know to share some of that stuff with you guys. So we'll still do that. So that's my favorite thing. Um, Landon, what's your favorite thing this week? My favorite thing is um, good coworkers. Aww. So a lot of the time we like to bitch about our coworkers and say how awful they are and everything like that. Uh, for a lot of people um, who don't have the 411 uh, on my personal life. I'm not going to talk about it here, but it's on fire. It's fine. Um, <laughs> and this week was just per was like a lot too. So I had a coworker who I who I sat there and was like, "Hey, I'm having a bad day." And then for instead of teaching uh, writing during our, the writing block, she had kids make me cards and Aww. saying how awesome I was as a teacher. And then they did a, uh, I think they're called anagram poems, quote unquote, where you take the whole alphabet and you say a adjective to with the letter. So like A is amazing and B is beautiful and all those things. And she had the other class do one of those for me um, as well. And so now that's on my whiteboard permanently. Um, <laughs> and so it was very, very sweet that I felt very... Um, supported by a fellow co-worker because I've never really had that as far as co-workers go. I've always worked traditional like coffee shop jobs and yes, you have great co-workers in that, but there's not really this vibe of wanting to be there. And here it was, it was really nice. Well, working retail and, um, and food and Bev is a bit different, right? Like there's no yes. common goal that you're all rallied around. Whereas like, you know, um, other types of jobs, like some, some offices and like, um, you know, teaching and things like that, you all have like a goal, like a mission. And so it's so much easier. I think it's so much Sorry. easier to be, to be kind and, uh, and nice and care when you're all kind of like rowing in the same direction for the same goal. I agree. It, it is. And it's, it's been really nice to have that, like, that system of support built and that expectation built so that you can slide right into it. And it's, it's really cool. Yeah. So I love that. I love that. It was a nice little favorite thing and it was, it made my Tuesday worth surviving. <laughs> so <laughs> I'll take it. Yes. So, so what I would love everybody to do is if we can all send Landon some good <laughs> vibes um, for, yeah, for work and for her personal life so that things can start looking up for her. Um, you know, hopefully by the summer we'll have some, you know, more good news for Landon's life and then we don't have to we don't have to go be going through all this crazy stress right now. Yes. And I mean, oh, for for the most part, I'm very privileged for the life that I am living and and uh there's there's a lot going on for everybody right now. I feel like the full moon in whatever zodiac sign we're in right now is a lot. Aries, we're um, in Aries right now. <laughs> oh, that explains why everyone's a little, you know, shoving each other's heads at each other. Um <laughs> very ram like and stubborn. But yes, no, it's been it's been a uh it's been hard for everybody right now. And so send good vibes, not just to me and Karen, but also to like people reach out to people. That's what I'm going to ask. Yeah. Yeah. So. The weather's getting warmer and things are changing. And, um, you know, that's always a time where, where we have some turmoil when we have those big changes like that. Oh, thank you. Uh, for uh, Hi. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Shall we, uh, get started on the topic of the day? Yes, yes, we can totally get started. All right, guys. So, like I said, this is a little bit of a of a remix of um, episodes that we've done before. So, I want to just touch briefly on where we had the representation episode where we talked about pretty people and pretty characters. And um, nothing today, I think, is going to change my feeling on 
on some elements of that. Like, um, okay, role play is a fantasy, right? Which means everyone is beautiful. <laughs> However, um, I think that there are certain groups and certain, you know, people that, uh, that it turns into a situation where, how do I say this? Uh, they don't get allowed to be beautiful, even though they are. <laughs> You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, um, like I think uh, Landon already mentioned, you know, fat people, right? And we tend to just assume if someone has, a, you know, is over a certain weight or looks over a certain weight, then they can't be pretty. And I reject that in real life. And I, and I, re I, I don't feel that way, you know, and that's not been my experience in real life. And, and yet, you know, because media does what it does, uh, I, I find myself continuing to duplicate that standard in roleplay, even though I don't think that it's true. Um, you know, it's, it's really, it's one of those things where I'm just like, gosh, society has really freaking gotten in my head. So, um, so when I talk about different identities and things today, I, I just want y'all to know that I still believe that roleplay is a fantasy, and, um, and I don't believe that I should have to kind of you know, make it not a fantasy just to make it more realistic or more woke or more anything, you know, it still is. Um, that hasn't changed. Yeah, it's... I think when we talk about things like this, it's more of a critique to the culture of what is beautiful rather than necessarily saying that players have to change their definition of beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Like, does, if that makes sense, like that we are talking about that because media portrays that fat people are not beautiful um, or that there is something inherently wrong with their bodies, that then we consume that and have that belief in our ideas. And it's not necessarily sitting there and saying, well, yeah, in your fantasy, you now have to be diverse in order for it to be good and a true fantasy. But it is like challenging that idea of, well, why is everyone super tall and 90 pounds soaking wet unless you're a man <laughs> and then you're like 200 pounds with muscles? <laughs> like that's there what there are, are, there are two body it. types. <laughs> there are two body types. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's like, it is like, what are the other, right? And then yeah. somewhere in the middle, there, like maybe there's something somewhere in the middle. But if you do look at like what fan casts or, or FCs that people choose to portray their characters, it is typically really um, it's it's people in media. Like, that's mm. what we have. And now I know there are some people who do, who do cartoons or anime drawings um, and things like that instead of doing real life uh, actors as or, or social media influencers as their FCs. But it, it, it still has that sort of style and like 90 pounds soaking wet vibe um <laughs> yeah even if Victoria's it's drawn even if it's drawn i do yeah. feel like you still don't get a huge range of body types uh oh landon just got disconnected somehow uh, landon oh my God, are you, i'm so sorry are you okay yeah, no i clicked i accidentally clicked a another channel voice channel oh, shoot. on accident <laughs> <laughs> I, like yeeted, it yeeted me out of this one. Oh god it was such a good point it was such a good point you had to go <laughs> i just i had a it was a it was a kind of mic drop um <laughs> <laughs> oh okay. my gosh hey Bye. erica how's it going today how's it going today hey, ty i see your comment about characters in in wheelchairs um oh, we yeah that. let's after we finish after we finish talking about the the weight aspect then um then i agree let's talk just a second about like Characters with more visible disabilities. Um, I also think that um, writing characters who have something like being fat um, takes a little bit more work because um, because this might not be something that you know unless you've lived as a fat person in this in this world. Is that it is a constant thing. It is a consistent thought or process or thing like that. And in order to make it feel true in RP, sometimes like it's like a thing, an extra thing that you have to think about is sometimes. how is this character's relationship with their body. Whereas, mm -hmm. whereas that doesn't, it happens certainly in thin characters, especially if you're writing characters with dis like disordered eating and everything like that. But it doesn't happen quite as often. 
or it doesn't seem untrue to not have it in there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, whereas, like, with fat characters, like, there's there's an extra thing that has to happen. Um, yeah. Or an extra, it's, it's almost like this extra thing that you have to take into consideration. Mm-hmm. It can uh, be. It absolutely which, can be. Yeah, which if you are a fat person, you don't necessarily want to because you want to leave this fantasy of not having to worry about it. So why fat char- fat, fat people might not write about fat characters is because yeah. of that reason. They don't want to have to live that experience in their fantasy. Um, yep. And then also it might be something that people who are not uh, of a certain weight don't think of or body type don't think of. Yeah, and you don't want to be that person that's like, you know, they that doesn't you know, that doesn't have that lived experience of being fat. And then you, you write the character um, and your friends read it and they, and they're like constantly rolling their eyes because you're just like, you're just not getting it. <laughs> and, yeah. and I think that, I think that it takes a lot of work to find friends that you can explore that sort of thing with, or find a group that is okay with you exploring that and potentially messing it up and things of that nature, you know? Um, it's tough. I think it's really tough to find that. And, and in the role play scene, you know, it's so hobbyist, right? It, it's just a hobby, which means no one is really like beholden to anyone else. Like there's no wide audience. You know, we're not making Disney movies here that, you know, potentially billions of people are going to see, right? We're talking about like an audience of single, maybe double digits of people, you know? So we don't really have those type of obligations. Um, in regards to role play, which makes it really tough, which makes it really tough. Like, where do you fall? Do you do you want to explore this stuff, or is exploring this stuff, you know, wrecking your fantasy? Um, and I can understand both perspectives very much so. Because I mean, I know when I role play, I just want to chill out and write. You know what I mean? Like, I don't really want to. I I want to get out like the things that I'm feeling. I don't necessarily want to worry about everything else in the world. You know? Exactly. And that's why I think that the thing that we're trying to say with this episode is that you don't have to write these things it we're not trying to necessarily make you feel bad about the fact if your if your characters are all young skinny or even athletic um lean built characters there's nothing necessarily wrong with all of that Mm -hmm. um it's just that if we are looking, if you are looking to challenge yourself or, or look outside of it or yeah. open up your repertoire of, of characters and things that you can write, these are all options and ways to do that and to explore a depth that you might not even be aware is a possibility for you to explore. Yeah, or just, it's just awareness. Like all we're really trying to do yeah. at this stage is awareness, exactly. you know? And I and, I and I and I admit that like a lot of awareness is not something that can be done by role players. Um, a lot of awareness has to come from the wider society and the media that we that we already consume because that's why we do these things in the first place. You know, that's why we that's why we don't explore these things in role play is because our larger society doesn't, so we don't think about it. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and absolutely. um, and just having that that understanding is an awareness. Again, mm-hmm. that's where it starts, and it's it's no one's fault necessarily because that's just how our world is built. Yeah, absolutely. I, I'm seeing, I I'm seeing raise, lots of... Sorry, go ahead. I was going to say, I wanted to raise a comment. Dish Dog yeah, made a really yeah. good comment. Yes, <laughs> um, yes, yes. I, I'd say that something has... De- if this is something that has definitely been pushed down by some room servers and owners. Some people don't want to deal with the complications of having characters that diverge from the norm. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, because it's... I don't know. <laughs> Because it's complicated and tough, it you is. know, and um, and I do think that we and we've mentioned this before in in other episodes. But for a lot of people, part of their allyship is you know creating spaces where this sort of thing is encouraged, or mm-hmm. like if you're not here to do that, then you're not really welcome, and things like that. And if people want to create those spaces, I think that's fine. I don't personally think that's the way to get people to write more diverse things by making them feel like they have to. Um, yeah. I think it's. I think a better tactic is to create a safe space where people can write whatever they want. And what I have found is when you create those spaces, people will just on their own 
decide to write more diverse things and, and, in, a, and in a way that, that feels more comfortable and that actually sticks with them instead of just being something like, well, I did this because the mods made me feel like I had to and I really didn't ever want to do it. And now I'm not going to do it again because that was such an uncomfortable experience. You know, so that's my personal thing. But I can totally understand making a game where, you know, because I always say make your games to attract exactly who you want to attract. So I can totally see what people are doing when they make these games because they're thinking, well, I don't care if someone doesn't want to be diverse. If they, they don't want that, then I don't want them in my game, you know? So um, I think that's that's fine too. You just have to know yourself if you're going to get into a game like that and you don't feel that way, then like maybe it's not the game for you, you know? Yeah, and I um, I also understand the the opposite of that too. That that the that you have owners and mods that don't want to deal with it at all, yeah. um, who who don't who don't think it's an issue, who don't want to deal with it at all. Personally, I don't like running the game that way because it is a thing. Like we try to make our skeleton characters diverse. To encourage diversity. It's kind of in... like a hint, hint. We'd like to see this yeah. if you're okay with it. <laughs> or even, or even like not even see this if you're okay with it, but also sit there and be like, oh, there is a, there is a fat character who is a skeleton. I might not want that character, but that means that this is acceptable here. Yep. Um, but it's giving as permission. As, as people not wanting to diverge from the norm, I understand it from a mod perspective, kind of, because there's also a thin line, especially when it comes to characters and race which is something we will talk about as well um of of fearing tokenization yeah um and that you it can be problematic in certain ways if you have a character or if you have a player who is white playing a stereotype of a character of of a character of color um yeah and it, if it's not done carefully and and it can and if frankly your player is an asshole it can get really not good and that's something as a mod team you have to decide whether you're willing to deal with or not mm -hmm, mm -hmm. i still think at the end of the day i still think at the end of the day and i can only speak about this from the perspective of like men writing women right because that's the the part of this that touches me i would still rather read a man writing a character that breasts boobily down the stairs than a man never writing female characters. Absolutely. You know, I would 100%. still rather that. I would still rather that. And I don't know, other people are gonna feel different ways. Other people aren't gonna want to to tolerate it. I. That's how I personally feel. I would rather them try and do it badly and me have to, to cringe or be uncomfortable than them to not even try. Yeah, no, I would rather see some representation even if it's tokenized than no representation. Yeah. Um, and because because, think... because it's role play, you know, and because it's role play, I have a very different opinion if we're talking about like, you know, the latest Marvel movie, you know, <laughs> yeah. than I do well, when it comes to like role play and fan fiction. <laughs> and even then, I I and I'm speaking of this as a as a as a white woman, I would still rather see a person of color than no people of color at all in in media. Uh, I would rather see well written people of color and several of them. Yeah, but I also know media is fucking terrible <laughs> yeah executives uh, don't that, know executives like they think that it's gonna hurt the movie or stupid stuff like that and it's not true like the data it's says so, it's not true I mean, but you know i mean if we're gonna talk about marvel black panther proved that um, right it's like <laughs> literally the best marvel movie it's the only one with a good villain it has amazing um cinematography and set dressing yep. and costumes anyways i like really like black panther i think it's one of the best marvel movies like for and real no, it's not even a joke it's and there's a reason why it's like one of the third or fourth top grossing Marvel movies. And I yeah. think it's the highest grossing Marvel movie of an individual uh, superhero. And yeah. the, the reason is, is that because it is so fucking well made. It and is good. It it's just a good movie. <laughs> which opened up. Yeah, it's a good movie, but it also has diversity, which opened up a whole bunch of people wanting to see it and support it. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah. So yeah. that's that was that was one of the things. So I I like that comment from Dish Dog. Um, yeah. I also think want to talk about this thing from Katie, and that was I think it can be scary to play something that you admire that you want to have played well and with respect, especially if you know you're going to be the only one that represents that. Yeah. Yeah, it can be tough um, yeah. because you you want that you want to do a good job, and then it's it does suck when you find out later that 
oh, I, I breasted boobily down the stairs. That was not my intention, <laughs> you know? And it sucks. It sucks to learn that. But the only way that you're going to ever get past that and be writing diverse characters that are that are good is to practice, is research and practice and research and practice and research and practice. Yep. Those are, those are really the only... <sighs> You will not know a lived experience that you have not lived until you've tried writing it in several different ways. Mm -hmm. um, and some of it might be cringeworthy um, and some of it might be incredibly wrong. And you might look back at this in three years and go, oh, my God, I was part of the problem. Yeah, I'd be um, like, I can't believe my friends let me do this stupid shit. Why didn't they tell me to stop? <laughs> why did, Why was that accent choice even considered? Um, but, yeah, but then you, then you realize that you're like, oh, but it actually started me on this journey. It yeah. actually made me more aware. I, from there, did more research that made me realize that I'm actually really passionate about this thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and mm -hmm. this character is now really well developed. I mean, we all sucked at writing our own characters and our own self inserts to start with no one was yeah. good at RPing. so why yeah. would we be good at RPing something that we don't have experience about right and i think when it comes to that also something to remember that just that also just because one person tells you the representation is not good that is one person's opinion right like you should just be taking it in and considering it they d one individual doesn't necessarily speak for a whole group, right? Like, I don't think when I come out here and say this, that, and the other about sexism, I don't necessarily think that I speak for all women. And I don't think that that's what most people are doing when they tell you that you did this, that, or the other wrong about their particular group. You know what I mean? Like, I've seen, I've, I've done, no group's a monolith. No group's a monolith, right? Yeah. So just because someone told you, like, oh, well, I felt this was racist you know, or I felt this was sexist or homophobic or whatever, like it is to that person, but that doesn't mean every single member of that group feels that way. And it's like, it's sometimes I think it can feel like the whole group is on you. What I'm trying to say is that's not the case. Yeah. <laughs> it's one I person's also, opinion. I also think that the, um, there is a problem here that is also conflated that when someone says this thing was racist, our brains hear you are racist. And there yeah. are two different things. Um, this thing was fat phobic. You are fat phobic. This thing was sexist. You are sexist. Like those are two very different statements. Um, yep. And it is okay sometimes to have the critique and understand that maybe you did do something racist. Mm -hmm. Maybe, you know, <laughs> I mean, I'll bring back what I did and I brought this up in a racism ex at our racism episode but i played a white character who had names from eastern africa who who was who's uh like familiar was an elephant like she was yeah. supposed to be a black character and i did not make her black and that was racist it doesn't necessarily mean that i am racist i learned from my mistakes and realized that things needed to change and yeah. if and when i play that character again she certainly will not be white <laughs> right. And I think that I think that we, you know, we live in a bigoted society, which means that no matter what, you will do bigoted things in your life. It is impossible to avoid it. The best thing that you can do is just when you realize you did that, just try to do better next time. And, and I, I, I think that's the standard we should be holding ourselves to not Absolutely. getting like so wrapped up in like bigot uh, being bigoted as part of our identity like just because you did bigoted something one time doesn't mean you're you're you know scarlet letter stamped bigot forever and ever yeah and it, and, it, and if you if someone did approach you and say that this representation that you are doing is homophobic is racist is is sexist um yes you're right they are not the end all be all especially if they are a part of the community that there is something against but it is important as an ally, as someone who is trying to be a supportive, to take what they said into consideration, mm -hmm. question your actions, review what you are doing, and see if there is something that you are comfortable with changing. Yeah. Um, if yeah. they're up for it, ask them. Uh, if they're not up for it, because they're not responsible for you educating yourself, try to figure out other ways to educate yourself. Again, mm -hmm. you get to decide to what level you want to do that with. Mm -hmm. um and it is a fantasy 
and this is a fictional world or these are fictional worlds and fictional characters. So you get to have your choice and your control and you aren't beholden to everything. But I think it is important to have that like realization um, that, yeah, yeah, you can do something that is not entirely PC and okay. Um, <laughs> and if someone has a problem with it, it doesn't mean you have to change everything because you're right. They don't support. That's not the entire group saying that. But sometimes a further look in is a good idea. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, <clears throat> box. <laughs> and I think <laughs> and I think that this this plays a lot into that tokenization that we wanted to mention during this this section. Right. Like I'll yeah. just give an example of something that I see all the time. Um, like, OK, Zayn Malik is not the only Pakistani celebrity in the entire freaking world. <laughs> Are you sure? Are you sure that he is? Um, he's definitely not. Uh, there's definitely no, he's others. Not. <laughs> and I and I feel like like in role play, that's one specific way that that the racism kind of comes out unintentionally is that we tend to tokenize. Like there tends to be like a popular insert ethnicity here face claim that you see over and over and over. Or there tends to be like a popular trope that you see with this particular ethnicity or identity over and over and over. And I think yeah. that that's where we can kind of like check ourselves a little bit and be like oh when i write a pakistani character am i really writing what i feel is inspiring or am i just copying the one thing that i've seen everyone else do and i think that that if we are just copying the one thing that we've seen everyone else do that's like your first clue of maybe what you're doing is a little bit of like tokenization or being stereotypical or that sort of thing. So that's like one way I think you can clue yourself into like, maybe you're not doing what it is you think you're doing. Yeah, and and like we said, that's, this, unfortunately, uh, sometimes tokenization is a step. Um, it's a step in the right direction, but it should not be where you end. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, I think most role yeah. players are young. Most, most role players are, are young, you yeah. know, and the, the way that you write when you're in your teen years and in your 20s is not the way you're going to write for forever and ever and ever. No, it's not. You are still trying to find your voice. Um, and, you know, um, and I get it. Zane, Zane Malik, is that his name? Yep. Um, I don't yeah. know. That's just the one I see all the time. The One Direction no, he, guy, that you know. That is a good one. He is a very attractive man and very pop popular among a certain age group. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I can understand why people would want to play his face. Yep. <laughs> um, and the same thing happened. I mean, this is not someone who is diverse, but the same thing happened with uh, El Elena Gilbert. Uh, oh, yeah. Thing. What is uh, her name? Nina Dobrev. Nina, Nina Dobrev. Dobrev. You see her freaking Everyone wants everywhere. I mean, everyone wants to play it. Um, yeah. No, this is this is from Ty. This is from uh, One Direction. Yeah. Um, <laughs> One Direction, not, Zayn Malik. <laughs> not Rami Malik. Um, but yes, no, I think that this is, I, I think that there is an understanding of, yes, these token things are going to happen, especially in, especially in RPs where there is a younger crowd or also like the Tumblr world where there's so many characters and it is a popularity contest as far as like part of your, what is part of what is selling you is also the face claims that you use. Mm -hmm. Not only the characters that you are writing, but the face claims that you use. Mm -hmm. um, so it, I understand why those really popular tokenized characters and faces get used a lot um, but it is, it should be a step. Yeah. Yeah. A step I agree. Rami Malik's awesome. But they're talking to yeah. uh, Dish Dog and Ty are talking about Rami Malik uh, as like another diverse face claim that they see a lot. He is freaking awesome. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, absolutely. So I think that that is, that is part of it. Mm -hmm. um, and again, I, I know I saw someone say this in the chat and so i thought it was an important thing to do i'm looking for it it has the word malice in it oh uh ty a, tw a ty said uh when people are approaching you about conversations about you either doing stereotypical things or 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 how they feel that you are writing uh not in a way that is in the best interest to the to the minority group that you are trying to write uh assume assume ignorance not malice 
Yeah. Um, either by approaching somebody or also being approached. Assume that people are not coming from a hurtful place or a hateful place. Like they're coming from a, hey, I want to educate you. Yeah. Um, like let's, if, if it's going to be, if it's going to be hurtful, like give them an opportunity to prove that. Don't just automatically assume that that's what they're coming at you for. Exactly. Um, because I think a lot of the times our reaction is to be like, be like oh, I'm not racist. Let me be angry and defensive back. Yeah. <laughs> um, and that reality, doesn't help either. <laughs> Oh no, it does not because no one learns at that point, right? Yeah. No one, no one learns. Um, and then also assume that when you are seeing it happening, uh, most people are not trying to be are trying to be assholes and malicious. Yeah. Uh, they're just probably not aware of the implications that they're writing. Yep, yep, <sighs> for sure. That's the importance of education. Yeah. And if you and want, I think a lot of this a lot of this applies to um what Ty mentioned before she had said um you know characters in wheelchairs. I think a lot of this plot applies to oh, yeah. visibly disabled characters as well. Like we see and a lot of characters with um with mental illness and mental struggles in in the role play world, but you really don't see a lot of characters with like physical disabilities or like really super visible disabilities or things like that, you know? Um, so that's another area. And I think you have you have all the same concerns there, where it's like, you know, what if I do the group injustice? What if I don't really understand what I'm writing, you know, um, and all of that sort of stuff. And I, I think I think all of the same things there apply. You just got to practice and research and practice and research. Yeah, I definitely I definitely agree with that. Um, practice and research. That's just what we're going to preach. Um, yeah. I think that there is this idea culturally that being physically disabled um, hinders a lot of people's abilities, um, mm. which is, you know, an ableist thought, but it is present in our culture. And therefore, people don't want to close doors that um, they feel will be closed if playing those characters, mm. um, which is not true, right? There's a whole bunch of technology. Also, especially if you're playing like sci-fi fantasy, um, there's technology. <laughs> Usually, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I have two, and they of... get poor reception. Oh no, Ty. We'll talk about that in a second. Sorry, go ahead, yeah. Linden. And a, no, and a lot of the like physical dis disabilities that people want to play, um, they can add doors that you don't even know it's possible. Um, I'm gonna take Jane's, one of Jane's characters. Uh, Leone was blind in this mm -hmm. most recent RP. Um, in Freya, she she was blind. She couldn't see. And so that opened up doors on her writing and it opened up relationships and dynamics that another kind of character wouldn't have. Yeah. Um, so I think that that's something that also can be considered that it's not taking away from possibilities. It's just exploring different ones. Yeah. Um, I think what Ty says is pretty valid though. Like in a lot of circles, um, especially if you're role playing, you know, one-on-ones or you're in a little bit of a younger crowd Sometimes it's really hard to find people that will play against those characters. And yeah. um, to me, and that's true, you know, I've, I've seen that as well, like in particular on, in like one-on-one -on -one spaces. So I'll use Tumblr as an example because I used to do a lot of Tumblr indie role plays. Like it was clear what Tumblr's uh, preference was in the indie role play scene. They wanted, you know, white men who are kind of dominant. And if you weren't playing that, they kind of weren't interested. And the more like marginalization you added on top of that, um, except for being gay, that was cool, but everything else, not really. Um, but uh, everything that you add on top of that, it's like less and less and less people are interested in interacting with your character. I think that's absolutely tragic. And I do think we as a community can do better in those regards. Like when we see those characters to actually, you know, praise them or interact with them or, you know, make them feel like their character is loved and welcome in the space. Absolutely. Um, and it, it's, again, fighting, fighting that normalization. This idea that there is a normal kind of character, just like there's a normal kind of person. Um, it, it's not true. Like, characters should be, there should be wheelchair characters. There should be characters who are blind or have other physical disabilities. Yeah, there should be. Um, yeah, and I think that a lot of, I think the thing, because we see, I think it's this interesting juxtaposition because we see so many characters with mental disorders and disabilities. 
um, which I think in itself I, I want to talk about and touch on, but we'll transition there. Um, we see so many characters have these things versus characters who do not have physical uh, um, disabilities. Mm-hmm. And it's mm-hmm. like this weird like idea that a, a mental disorder or disability makes you different and cool and special, but a physical disorder or disability does not. And that's so um, wrong. It's, it's so wrong. And it's not true. But that is a lot of how I've seen people write and approach these two different kinds of disabilities. Yeah. Um, and and it's like, okay, but that's that's not true. <laughs> um <laughs> mental yep. mental disorders and disabilities are not just uh character growth plates. Um, they're not just places to like are tropes to use to grow your character. Um, and if they are, then physical disabilities can do the same thing too. <laughs> hmm Yeah, they can be. Um, and I think it's just, it's tough, right? It's tough because people want that fantasy of like the broken person being saved. And an easy way to do that is to give your character um, some kind of mental disorder or mental disability, right? Um, mm-hmm. And... And for whatever reason, we don't see the the physical disabilities doing that same trope in the role play scene. It's it's very specific to role play because in like if you think about like published fiction and books, it's not really true. There's definitely those same like savior fantasy stories for all kinds of disabilities. I'm not saying those stories are necessarily good or helpful to those communities. They're not really, they got all their own kind of problems, but it is very interesting that in the role play community, we get so focused on doing that trope with a, um, with a, a mental, uh, you know, disability. Yeah. So yeah. Um, <sighs> this dog has a question of, do we prefer things to be more subtle or more in your face? Um, I guess I personally prefer more subtle depictions because I want to maintain that fantasy and I think that helps me maintain it. But um, I think there's something to be said for just being straight up in your face um, about it as well. You know, especially if you're somebody who's using the writing to kind of like work through things that you're going through in your real life. Sometimes that's very cathartic to just be like, this is how it is. Yeah, I think it matters the um, the character and the yeah. purpose. Um, using weight as an example, if I have a character who's having trouble with their weight, um, or or has issues with their body in general because of one thing or another, um, then I think in your face is an appropriate time, and it might not be all the time because for me, it's not all the time, right? For mm-hmm. for uh, relationships with your body for anybody of any size uh you're not always constantly thinking about your body but sometimes you are uh whether it be a hurt knee being overweight anything like that so um i think that it can be in your face and subtle at the same time um Mm. it, it matters also your arc if you're as far as like disabilities go if it's someone who just can't is just getting into their disability because they were in an accident or Um, puberty has made something happen um, or they're of that certain age where these disabilities are triggered um, then then it could be not subtle because that's the arc that you're writing if you're writing a character whose arc has nothing to do with their disability I think subtle is great um, because it goes to show that hey a person's character is not just x y and z yeah it's not just that they're black or that they're have schizophrenia or that they're wheelchair bound or that that they are living breathing human beings and that's just as important as them having blonde hair (laughs) oh sorry it was apparently katie's question my bad sorry katie um (laughs) and i think this goes this goes kind of to own voices so i can say from my personal perspective if you want to make your character all about insert diversity thing here then It probably should be coming from someone of that group. I think they're going to do a better job at it. Um, But if you are, like, not a member of that group, you're probably going to do better by giving your character, like, other stuff that's important to them and other parts of their arc that are 
that you know have value to the story um that's just my personal opinion what i've seen as far as good writing goes when i see things where people make it all about you know insert um you know diversity claim here then the best ones are typically own voices ones um and not somebody exploring something that's outside of themselves so that's been yeah. my experience in what i thought was actually you know well written versus like Ooh, this is cringe. <laughs> I mean, and that, that's the thing, too, is that you can't, as much as we as writers want to live other experiences, we can't. Um, we try very much, hard. <laughs> yeah, as much research and reading and, um, and anything and consuming media of what it's like to be a black person in America uh, as I, as I can... I still don't know what it's like to be a black person in America because I wasn't raised as a black person in America. Yep. Um, so like writing that story and that being the main part of the story is going to feel disingenuine because I don't know. Mm -hmm. um, and that's and, where the cringe happens and it's like, oh. Yeah, and that's where, <laughs> that's where you fill in blanks or that's where you miss things. Like mm -hmm. that's, where, that's where mistakes get made. You can't think of all the implications of everything. It's that, it's that idea of, like, white privilege or any sort of privilege. Um, you can't think of things that you don't know. You you just, because they're second nature. They're not things that you think of. None of us, at least me, I, I don't get into the car and think about where am I going to put my license because I want to make sure that if I get pulled over, someone doesn't think I'm reaching for a gun. Yeah. Like, that is an inherent thought for me. That it would never happen to you. No, it would never happen to me. It, but it is an inherent thought to other people. And so if I am writing that story, I might not think to write that. And it mm -hmm. looks like a hole in the story or it looks disingenuine. Uh, not saying to not write that, but um, but I do, I agree that the better writing and the better stories get told when it is a person from that community. Yeah, if you're going to write about that aspect of them. Now, if, if, yes. their, if their identity is happenstance, then it's whatever. You know, but if their identity is a core part of their arc, typically own voices is going to do it better. Yeah. But I also think that, again, when we're talking about diversity, there might not be a lot of diversity in the RP on the in the RPG world. They're just I don't think there is. I don't think um, at there least is in my either. Experience, because I think that uh, the safety of being able to escape online comes with a certain amount of privilege. Um, yeah. that a lot of people don't have when they are younger. And I think it's also, it also has to do with what gets interactions, right? Because at the end of the day, yeah. you have to write a character that other people want to interact with. And, you know, we all have internalized bigotry that makes us less likely to interact with diverse characters. And, exactly. um, and you know, if you try to play diverse characters, like Ty was talking about, like you experience that and you see it yeah. firsthand, like, oh, this character, everybody wants to interact with. And this other character barely gets any offers. Hmm, why could that be? You know, so that's that's like the challenge here. That's like the challenge to all of us is, is don't be part of that problem, you know? Yeah. Um, which is easier said than done because yep. we are bigoted. Like yeah. we, we, at the end of the day, we are inherently biased and um have our own beliefs and make decisions that we don't even know why we're making those decisions yeah a lot of times it's very it's very subtle and it's very like it's not um we're not doing it on purpose yeah yeah oh ty i like what you said if you remove the thing does the character still work as a person if i restored leon's legs and mobility he is still a doctor a single dad funny passionate about and about his patients that is a hundred percent true. Yeah. Um, no one, and this is like, and I have a whole soapbox, and I think I went on the soapbox when we talked about representation before. Um, so many times in media, we see stories about queer people, and their whole story is being queer. <laughs> um, <laughs> these identities, these parts, are just parts of people, are just parts of characters. It shouldn't be that that his that Leon's entire character development is that he can't use his legs or Phoebe's entire character development is that she has dissociative identity disorder or or x y and z or that you know someone's entire character development is that they're fat like these are parts and pieces of a character not the entire identity of them yeah for sure
Um, it's a good but rule I of thumb. See... Good rule of thumb to help yeah. you avoid some cringe. And I've definitely seen where people have not applied that rule of thumb. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> not only in RP, but also in general mass media. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it happens sure. a lot. It does. It does happen a lot. That's why I say, like, the, the times that peop that somebody is going to write, like, a queer character is a good example, that somebody is going to write, like, a queer character where their entire arc is just about them being queer, it, you can usually it's the own voices that are a little less cringy on that, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yep. But I do, I do kind of want to transition, and I think we've naturally done this, that it is still important, and we will stick by this, to write characters that are different from yourself. Yeah. Um... It improves your skill, but it also improves, um, I think, how you view the world. If you are successfully able to do it. Yeah, for sure. And I think I think it it improves your empathy. I think mm -hmm. it becomes it becomes harder to have those bigoted thoughts when you have diverse characters, because you're like, well, gosh, wouldn't it be frustrating for my character if somebody were to say this sort of thing to them? You know, and it just makes it, it makes it really real um, in a way that's hard to duplicate in other areas. You know, it's the same reason why representation in media is so important to a lot of activists, because they know the more people see and experience these things, the more likely they're going to, you know, not have as many bigoted thoughts or as many bigoted actions in their real life and things like that. Exactly. Um, and I think that it... <sighs> It makes you think, like it's that empathy piece, but it also makes you think, right? It It is an exercise in understanding, um, which as the writer, I have always craved. I've always craved understanding the perspectives that are not mine, um, of understanding the other side of the coin. So it for me, like, it's fun. It's fun to play characters who are different than myself. And that can be as shallow as you know beautiful skinny popular <laughs> to as uh as diverse as having an extremely debilitating mental disorder um that is different from my own mental disorders <laughs> <laughs> we all want to be the bella swans of our own stories <laughs> i mean oh my sometimes it was really fun being you know whatever some Demi Lovato face claim that was just like super chill and loved by all the boys and was in a love triangle. Like sometimes it's really fun to be able to escape and play that. Yeah. Um, and then sometimes it's also really fun to just like also be trapped in my own queer nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> Jane, you're cracking me up with you saying um, that you apparently, she apparently wrote Leonie staring at something at some point because she forgot she was blind. I did not notice. I did not notice. Um, I'm so sorry that happened. I'm glad you're able to find it and fix it. But uh, maybe I read it after you went back and fixed it. I don't know. Um, but that is that is hilarious. I'm sure we have all committed similar um, stupid faux pas like that. But that's also, like, that's also an example of um, like not under not a hundred percent being aware of the other lives that you are writing, right? Um, I kind of, I kind of hinted towards that or talked about that with being a fat person, um, what it feels like to be blind or fat or whatever in a world, you don't know, you don't know how much energy and mental thought it takes in order yeah. to exist in that. So you do sit there and go, oh, I'll just have her stare at something. And I forget that she is casually forget that she is blind and cannot stare at things. <laughs> Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> or at least at particular things <laughs> yeah i mean she's she can say like she stared into the distance i guess like she can still yeah, do that or, but she can't like or, stare at something in the same way that a sighted person would yeah or at like i know that a lot of blindness um is still there's still like light shadow sensitivity so like stared at uh, into the light like that is something that that could be possible but staring at the vase of flowers a little yeah, little questionable not. Yeah. <laughs> right. Exactly. Exactly. Marina and I were both like, whoops. <laughs> yep. Exactly. That's so funny. <laughs> I'm trying to think of like maybe a time because I, I know I've done the same thing, but I can't. Nothing's coming to mind right now, uh, a specific example, but I'm sure I've done the exact same thing where I'm like, oh, wait, it doesn't work like that because this character is this, that or the other. They have to do it slightly differently. <laughs> yeah. 
Oh my gosh. Yeah. Uh. So, so it, there is still an important part of this as um, playing someone different from yourself. Yeah, and we had a whole episode, just like I talked about the representation episode we did, we had a whole episode about, like, playing characters that were different from you. So, um, you know, if you want to hear, like, two hours of just of just that, we have that episode there as well. And if you want to hear more thoughts on representation, too, we have that episode as well. Um, again, this is, a, this is like a supercut episode. <laughs> greatest hits, greatest hits of, um, of some different things that we've talked about. Because I agree, I think it is very important to always be exploring things outside of yourself, even if you're doing it badly at first. I think that's better than saying, no, I'm going to stick to what I know and only ever write that. I don't think anyone grows that way. I don't think our empathy is improved that way. I don't think that that is beneficial to humanity, you know, to make, make it really super big picture and bigger than it really is. Uh, you know, I think it's better if we're all trying, even if we're doing it a little bit badly sometimes. Yeah better bad than not at all that's right your writing will improve i think when you try this well um, also improve um on playing it will also give you tools and different perspective on how to play characters that are not so different from yourself mm -hmm. um because you start paying attention to those little details that you might not have paid attention to it highlights what little details do the characters who don't have something like blindness pay attention to because we all do we all experience the world in different ways um and different awarenesses of our body and and our abilities so mm -hmm. that that will that in itself helps you for lack of a better word focus on what the stereotypical rp character could do to like it improves that muscle mm -hmm. it does i think it does absolutely um, you're um, only going to be better. You're only going to be better for it. You're not going to be worse for trying. Yeah, and also like, if you ever, I know a lot of people RP don't intend to ever solo write, but if you do intend to solo write, it gives you opportunity to then write other characters accurately, or as accurately as possible in your books without necessarily having to write from their perspective. Um, and it encourages diversity within your solo writing. Uh, and it doesn't, it makes it not as scary. Like it's the pra practice run before the big game or whatever. Yeah. And there are some RPers that that is like their dream, right? Is to write more solo writing oh. and maybe get something published or whatever. So Hello. if that is your dream, like, I feel like you almost <laughs> have to, right? Like you almost yeah. have to write like diverse characters so that, uh, so that you can get that practice and experience with it. Absolutely. I mean, uh, speaking as, as that is, I have never shied away from admitting that 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 is a goal of mine too is that I do want to solo write so yeah I write diverse characters because I want to see diverse characters in the stories that I create by myself mm -hmm. uh, and if I'm going to create them by myself I can't depend on other people creating those diverse characters for me <laughs> yep. yep Lunar I see your comment in there about what happened to you when you had like a temporary blindness for a character mm -hmm. that really sucks um, mm -hmm. I hate that that happened uh, I can definitely relate though as far as certain experiences I had in the indie Tumblr roleplay scene in which characters got attention versus which characters didn't. It really sucks. Um, you know, I do think some, some role players get scared away uh, a little bit easily in regards to that stuff. Yeah, they don't it want to. It only the, makes uh... your writing better if you try not to be scared and do it anyway. It does. No, and they, they I think also there is this idea of, um, I don't know. I can't even justify it. <laughs> I mean, it's not justifiable, but I think that um, people, again, don't necessarily want to write serious things that make the, that ruin the fantasy. Yeah. And it is unfortunate that those people's fantasy include a world where there aren't any disabled people. Yeah, for sure. Um, but I mean, it, I also, I get it sometimes, you know, but this is like more what I would want to see in that regard. Like, I want to see more things that are more like um like Briggerton right like yeah it's diverse well, and it makes no yeah, sense how exactly that diversity works but you know what it's fun it's great <laughs> Sometimes I, it's fun. I, my issue with Bridgerton is they tried to make sense of it and, it, and they um, should not have that, they should have just let it be they should no, have just they, let it be and that was that was where we lost it that was where yep. I was like oh no you got, you had it I was living the dream and then we had to bring that up and now we'll just no um 
<laughs> yeah, they tried but... to, like, make it make sense, and they should not have done that. They should have just, like, let no, it be. It should have just been, like, what's that Cinderella version? I think it has Brandy in it, and, like, the yes. family is, like, completely different ethnicities, and it makes no sense, and no one says a word, and it's the great. <laughs> With the white and black king and yes! queen. Yes! Absolutely. No, it makes no sense. It makes no think, sense. But no one says anything and we all just accept it. Yeah, and it's and like that's the other thing too is that when it comes to like fantasy and world building and stuff like that, it doesn't have to make sense. Inherently, unless you are trying to write completely accurately and do, pulling a Tolkien or something like that, you... you your readers and your your fellow RPers are going to suspend a certain amount of belief. Yeah. Um, and or they should, right? Like if they they're really should. like that hard on the on the realism, I don't know. That sounds exhausting. Um, it, but it, they should have a certain does. amount of grace for that. Which some people are, and that's cool. But for me, that's not my type of RPR, right? I'm no. a lot of, and we talk about that. That a lot of sometimes our answers to questions is IDK magic. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like there is this idea of, of you can if you never question why the people are of different races and it just works together and there's no race issue happening um, no one else has a right to question it <laughs> well sometimes <laughs> that's just sometimes it's just a breath of fresh air you know to just yeah. be like this is how it is and we're just gonna we're just gonna roll with it you know as soon as I saw the duke as, as soon as I saw the Duke as a, a person of color in Bridgerton, I was like, cool, this is where we're living. This is awesome. Never question it. Or the queen. The queen was a woman of color. And yeah. I was like, I'm not going to question it at all. Not going to do it. Cool. And as soon as they tried to, and as soon as the writers questioned themselves and tried to justify their choice, that was when it broke for me. Yeah, and it I, kind of all falls apart at that point. Like, it doesn't make any sense. You can't unwrite slavery by one marriage. <laughs> <laughs> but with the power of love, Landon, with the power of <laughs> no! love. It doesn't work. <laughs> just let, just yeah, let that me was have so dumb. my thing and belief that I never had to think about it. And I know that this is also how a lot of people of color responded to Bridgerton because I've read a lot of like <gasps> angry blog posts about this that it was like, just let it be. Just let us have pot people <laughs> oof indeed dish dog oof indeed oof oh indeed. my god <laughs> uh, uh, okay yeah so yeah this is our plea for this section is like just try like just write it anyway just write it anyway and you know you do what you want to do with it um at whatever level you feel comfortable it's just going to make you make you better it's just going to make you a better writer yeah and and that's I mean that's not necessarily the goal of RP is to make yourself a better writer um, because especially if you just like to RP for the sake of it but you want to tell stories and at least for me I get tired of telling the same five stories <laughs> like me too. If you don't, or two stories or one story if you don't if you're not willing to mix it up and play different kinds of characters and play different kinds of tropes um, I feel like it it gets Boring. boring and yeah. you're not you're you're not moving forward um and i know there are some people and we've talked about it that there are some people who really just want this specific thing and to play this specific thing over and over again and i hear you there are some ships that the dynamic i'm like i could play this in every single rp for the rest of my life yep <laughs> um and i and i'll figure out a way to make it work uh but there are areas and accesses that it's like no things need to be different um, mm -hmm. and I want to invent new characters because I want to have new storylines, uh, things like that. That's right. Shout out. You are not new to the stream. Why are you lying? You've been on the stream new. before. She's never listened before. <laughs> oh my God. All this time. <laughs> um, yeah, absolutely. Like all of, all of that, like all of that, I definitely co-sign agree with that sort of thing. There's some things I can play over and over and over and some things that I'm like, I've played this six times and I'm bored of it now. You know, so yeah. um, and but I do think like I do think for my audience, right, for the for those of you guys that are watching this, I don't think we have people watching that are like the I just want to chill out and role play and I really don't care about getting better. So um, I think most people watching are the type of role player that like is here because they want to improve their skill because they want to get better because they think there there can be more to to role play than just hanging out and pretending. Um, so, yeah, I hope you all feel in, feel inspired for that. Um, sure. Ty, 
Yeah, Ty says some of the people who have rejected Leon because of the wheelchair have also talked about wanting more physical disability variation in characters. Yeah. Um, welcome to the world where everyone is a hypocrite. And they yep. don't realize how they're being ableist or racist or not diverse in their own actions. Yeah. Um, this has happened to anybody who has not been a part of a minority. Uh, that's just how people realize that they don't know what they're doing. I, I think people that are even part of a marginalized group do it too. Sometimes we are we are so internalized, uh, oh, you know, towards this bigotry. Like it is very hard to do what you say you want to do and to live those values. It is hard. So I'm sure that those people like meant it when they said they wanted more. Um, but it's, it's one thing to, to want that. And then another thing to act on that want, you know what I mean? So, I mean, it sucks, but I think, I think that's a pretty common experience, Ty. I really do. It is. And it, unfortunately, until like, and we'll, we're going to talk about villains in a bit, but until they, ex this happens with villains, until they experience how their behavior is on the other side of it, it's not necessarily something they can learn. Yeah. Uh, they don't know they're, they're doing it. They don't know they're doing it. Yeah, until you play disabled characters or non-white cisgendered male characters or anything like that, um, you don't necessarily understand how it's being received by others. Um, and that's an unfortunate truth. Uh, and it takes time. And I hope that they do continue to talk about wanting diversity. Because if they continue to talk about wanting diversity, one of them at some point is going to play a diverse character, hopefully. And yeah. then they'll be able to see the problem and they can learn from that. Um, exactly. Yeah, and I also, like, not to talk, not to, like, compare the two, but uh, a, that happens, that same process, I feel, happens in playing, like, un, unused or unpopular tropes in RP. So, like, villains. Mm -hmm. Um mm -hmm. People don't understand how badly people who play villains are treated or how villains are treated until they play villains. It's um, true. It's true. And, and we're going to talk about tropes and that in a second. But I, yeah, to, con to just kind of make that connection. Yeah, we can move to that. So um, we wanted to spend some time talking about like identities and stuff like that. But I think we've kind of, we've kind of, um, you know, got that pretty well. But I think the same thing happens with certain tropes and certain character archetypes. Um not that it comes from the same place necessarily like i think the origin of it is different and why people do it is different but the results are the same like i think that's more what we see with the tropes we wish we would see more of like it's i don't think it's necessarily coming from a place of bigotry or a place of like you know society has, has taught us to behave this way i think it's more of like a monkey see monkey do you don't see it so you don't do it or you tried it once and it went horribly, so you never try it again. And I think it's it's a little bit, it's less heavy, but it's the same result. And there's yeah. several of those that I know we want to talk about, villains being one of them. Yeah, um, so yeah let's, let's, let's go. So Landon, what has your experience been like playing <laughs> villains as someone who, who has played them for years and years and years? Um, There are two different kinds of villains. There are the attractive white male villains, <laughs> and then there is everybody else. Um, <laughs> and uh, <sighs> the attractive white male villains are very fun to play. Why are they very fun to play? Because every single person loves them. Oh, they have to be relatively young, too. Like, yes, heaven forbid yes. you make them over yes. 40. Um, <laughs> sorry, just then flashback to Fulo. I was like, oh, yeah, no, that is important. <laughs> um, they, and single. <laughs> yeah. Uh, unless, unless part of their character arc is getting into a relationship or ship. Um, yeah. No, they need to be uh, young, attractive, and white male. Because there is like this expected yet forgive, like there's an expected thing about it of, oh yeah, that's what villains look like. Uh, the bad boy type, we've all we've all seen it in media. It's a trope that's constantly played in media. Um, but also at the same time, it's like this, especially if there's a romance involved, this idea of this this villain can be healed or turned. Um, even if it's not going that way, 
<laughs> it's like still this idea that people have in their head. Um, and there's a forgiveness around it, which is great because it makes it really fun to play that type of villain. Um, personally, I love playing that type of villain. There's a reason why I go back to Rab um, over and over again, uh, <laughs> even though he hasn't been like a main villain in 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 a hot second. Um, but he is this like just terrible person. <laughs> um and it's fun but it's he's great. but he's white and he's beautiful so he's white and he's beautiful <laughs> and he doesn't matter that he cuts up women and you know stalks women and but he and does it mur- sexually wants to murder and wants to murder his girlfriend and decides not to and keeps her around in a semi-abusive relationship <laughs> like it doesn't matter that all these things happen because he's young and beautiful and expected and the villain and there is no flack for it at all no sarcastic comments no anti-rap like there is certainly like oh god he's such an asshole like all of these things and there is this like cheer of oh we want to take him down but that's very expected with playing a villain um yeah, but nobody nobody actually hates him or there is he, no, and nobody's there is like no... oh he makes me uncomfortable or, yeah, there's you no know... vile thoughts and comments towards him. It's just accepted. Mm-hmm. Um, anything else <laughs> is uh, not accepted. Um, yep. And uh, I I have played uh, several of those kinds of characters. Um, a lot of the time, um, their, their power is questioned. That's always a fun one. Uh, when I play a young male villain their power is never in question there is no one who really tries to challenge them uh and say that they're more powerful and be the bigger bean or bad um when you play an older one all the time where it's like no actually they they're skilled in what they're doing and they actually have more power because they're you know skilled in their abilities um but yeah that's something that happens uh constantly questioned constantly undermined especially if they're females um, it's just a very different world and the, how people react to them out of character and not just in character is extremely different. Yeah, for sure. Landon, I'm very sorry. Um, but Dish Dog has replaced you with, with Re. He wanted to see the baby, so. <laughs> <laughs> My beautiful face. <laughs> How dare you replace me? She's very cute, though. So, you know, it is what it is. <laughs> but yeah, Ree's in here today. So that's that's the baby. That's the baby that's on fine. camera. Ree is, Ree is a cutie. I'll, for, I'll allow it. Um, it ruins the aesthetic of me being a villain, but that's fine. Um... <laughs> but yeah, I do think that, like, you know, if you're playing an older character that's a villain, or you're playing a woman that is a villain, or you're playing really, really just any character that doesn't fit that like white, cishet, young looking guy, right? Dominant, like if it doesn't yeah, fit yeah. that. Oh yeah, yeah, that too. So if it just if it doesn't fit that, then you end up with like all of these weird things that happen. Like people constantly want to challenge them and bring them down, like and not in a fun way, but in like a I need to win at role play and you are my you know stumbling block at winning um they they have to they spend a lot of time like undermining them and talking about how like um uncomfortable that character makes them feel and i don't mean uncomfortable in like a oh what a cool creepy villain i mean and in like i wish i i want to convince this person to stop writing their character type of way in like a controlling way yeah we have had people we have had people try to appeal appeal to the mod team to stop certain tropes from happening because it made them uncomfortable but it wasn't the tropes that made them uncomfortable it was a villain character who made them uncomfortable yeah like when you dig into it it's always because of a villain character that doesn't fit that very specific you know way we're used to looking at you know what quote unquote what the hot villains are right yeah that's what it always boils down to um so yeah that and I think that that experience matches a lot of what I've seen, a lot of what what I've you know experienced. Um, Dish Dog shared a shared a moment where they had a female villain, and um, and when it was a female villain, everyone expects them to be a honeypot. Like yes, I think that's true. Yes. Like nobody takes it serious, 
and a lot of people will try to undermine a character that's a villain if they don't fit like a very narrow you know sort of set of tropes and i i wonder if you've experienced this because i i had this experience too but very briefly but you've played abby who has yep. who has done this transfer transformation many times where it's like an undermining of their villainous because they're being corrupted by somebody else yes absolutely. um where it's like they're not as serious because someone else is actually making them terrible um, yeah. or evil or powerful uh, and it's they're not real then because this is not who they really are. They're just in a bad situation. Yep. Um, I usually don't let it get to the role play stage because I'm pretty good at sniffing it out when it's happening. But I have definitely, while I've been while I've played Abby in some of her more villainous roles, she goes, she's not always super villainous, but some, but a lot of times she is. But I've definitely had Abby in her more villainous roles. People sliding into my DMs trying to figure out how they can save her. Oh and I have to God. explain, I'm not interested in that. I'm not interested in her breaking up with her villain boyfriend. I'm not interested in her <laughs> becoming a better person. I'm not interested in her fixing the situation that she broke. I, I want our characters to be enemies. That's why I'm playing it like that. Um, and I, I have experienced that that is very hard for some role players to understand. Role players, I've said this before, as a group, we are very conflict diverse, which is just insane because we're out here supposed to be writing conflict and yet, but you know, it is what it is. There's all kinds of reasons that happens. And um, I have definitely had people really struggle to understand why my interest in playing her is what it is. And, uh, and I've definitely had situations where I have felt compelled to over explain my position yeah. on how I want her played and it can be kind of tiring I'm not gonna lie <laughs> yeah no it's it's exhausting I think that that's something that like why people I mean it's been a while since we talked about villains so we might have mentioned this but that's why people don't play them very often because they don't understand how exhausting it is to play a villain because yep. Um, you can sit there and say you love a villain and love a good villain, but when you are constantly in the out of character chat insulting that villain, um, or not talking good about that villain, or it feels or a certain way, it, it feels it, a it certain feels way, like, and yes, even if it's unintentional, yeah. you can be separate from your character, absolutely. Um, but it, but, but sitting there and being like, oh my god, I can't wait for this character to die, and that all I be talk, uh, all I talk about, while also saying, oh my god, I love him so much, is like not a fun feeling all the time. Not always, um, and I and I think you have to, I think you have to take take a little bit of it, right? Like if you're gonna play a villain, you have to have a thick enough skin to deal with that. But I can totally understand why not everybody does. Yeah. Oh, um, Shadow says a great point, too, is that they also don't get a lot of attention in group RPs. Like, as soon as people try to figure out they're a bad person, uh, they're going to stay a bad person. You stop getting threats. Absolutely. Yeah. Or you are only used to be the bad person. Mm -hmm. um, which is fine if you have a good versus bad RP. But if you have someone that is like, this has actually happened to Jim recently, who is the character I play now, who I wouldn't consider a villain um although he's an asshole <laughs> uh, that a lot of the threads that that were coming to me at some point in time were a lot of like hey can jim do this bad thing to this person because i need a reason for this person to do something else like it was a jim was a tool in in uh in this other character's development which is fine sometimes but it constantly gets repetitive when it's like okay you're gonna undermine my character's power and ability and ass holiness but you're going to be okay with it when you need something <laughs> uh, and i think that that's something a lot of villains and people who write villains experience yeah it gets complicated um thank you so much for the gift gift sub dish dog i really appreciate it got me to my goal of one sub per stream <laughs> um so yeah i think that i and again like it's none of these things that people are doing are necessarily bad i just think that like when it comes to playing villains you have to have a thicker skin and i can absolutely see why you know people try to play a villain they experience some of these things and they're like mm, yep not doing that again that wasn't fun 
So I think that I think that we just have to be we have to think about that and think about, you know, when you approach somebody for a plot that's like really they're just being they're just being like a tool for you, make sure that you tell them, hey, and since you're going to do this, like, please let me know how I can help you with your plots. Like, mm -hmm. I don't think that you need to come up with plots for other people. I think that's silly. But I think that you need to make sure that they know that, hey, now they can come to you for the same reason, you know? Because yeah. that's not always um, an open invitation. Because I've tried to do a little bit of, like, tit for tat and been told, no. And it's like, hmm, but I did this thing <laughs> for you. And then, okay, like, cool, I guess. That's or, fine. Or being like, <laughs> okay, so why would, like, when I quit, for me, it was like, well, why would my character do this thing? Yeah. Um. And the answer was, well, because he's an asshole. And I'm like, that's not that's not how being a villain or an asshole works. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm willing. I'm willing to help people with their plots. But if I get the sense that they're not willing to reciprocate, then I don't really. I yeah. Then it's kind of like. Absolutely. Mm. <laughs> and Absolutely. you have to sometimes be explicit because I've had I've had so many experiences where the person wasn't willing to reciprocate. Then that is my assumption. You know, a lot of the times, and it's. And that's not necessarily fair, but that's just how it is. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I think all of these reasons make it really, really, really difficult for people to play villains or want to play villains for yeah. long periods of time. Um, which is when you get an RP full of heroes. Yeah. Which is not necessarily a bad thing. Um, and... I, I think we're very fortunate because we do not run an RP that way. We have a community that is very positive to our assholes and villains. Yeah, who are, we who, tend to really like them. <laughs> yeah, we really like them. And we haven't in the past. There have been issues. There have been certain villains that have gotten a lot of hate. Um, um, some villains that have been really difficult to play. But I think for the most part, we have built a community where we want to see bad people and interesting people and because of that uh i don't think we experience this as much but it's certainly in our experience of rping i have been in role plays where it's like one bad character yeah <laughs> and, and then it kind of and then it's compounded characters. and then it's compounded because everything all of those things get put on that one bad character it's not spread around but yeah yeah and then also at that point too um when you have a bunch of good characters and the vibe is that the villain characters are bad and they can never win and um everything that they do is wrong not only is it compounded but it's also like the villain is constantly losing that they're not even a villain at that point yeah um erica because has a good comment yeah um erica has a good comment on this that i think is exemplifies kind of what we're talking about um the only time i really struggled playing a villain was when i was larping one not writing one the experience was physically isolating and lonely so yeah, I think that um, you know, in in LARP, you're probably having a lot of those same uh, forces at play, but because you're in the physical space too, it's like extra hard. But I think probably what was making people treat you like that in in LARP is probably the exact same thing that we're talking about in written role play. Um, it's just kind of they took it into a physical space and didn't really think about like, you know, you as the person. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Um. It's tough. It's tough. Yeah, no, it's really tough. Um, so I would love to see more, but I think in order to have more, we need to build a we need to build communities that are encouraging. Yeah. Um, that aren't isolating to our villains. Uh, we need to send love to our villains. That is that like recognizing that if you really want a villain to die, that that writer is doing a damn good job. Yep. Um, and that needs to be expressed. Mm -hmm. um, because it takes a lot to write a character that everybody hates. Yeah, it, is. it does. <laughs> it really does. I mean, it really does. <laughs> um, at least hates in the in the villain way. Yeah. Um, or is passionate about, I should say. Yeah. yeah. So I think that that is definitely a character or trope that I would like to see mm -hmm. more often. Mm -hmm. um, I yep. think another mm -hmm. another type of character that isn't there enough because again kind of that they're being used for something um our mentor characters yes this is what uh, i have i i have in particular an interest in 
um, seeing more of because I've I've played this sometimes and I've I've played against mentor characters as well as like the main character they were interacting with and so like I've seen a lot of how that kind of manifests and it can very quickly turn into like your character doesn't get to have their own arc all they ever get to do is arcs for other people and i don't mind doing arcs for other people i i love helping other people with their arcs you know when it's appropriate and playing the mentor and that sort of thing but again when you start to feel like it's not getting reciprocated it can feel very isolating in a in a kind of similar way as a villain like nobody wants to fix the character like they do like they have when i've played abby right but they have absolutely, I, I've still had the experience of like, I'm doing this arc that's going to help out their character. And then I'm like, okay, can we do this for my character? And they're like, no. And I'm like, <laughs> oh, <Sorry>. okay. <laughs> um, and okay. not that people can't tell me no, but it feels really bad whenever you've done so much for this other character and then you can't get anything to work out for yours. Yeah, and I mean, I've been guilty of that, right? I've been guilty of, oh, what can my character gain from a mentor character? Yeah. What can I get from it? And then sitting there and being like, oh, well, it doesn't really fit the plot to do anything else. Yeah, and it's like, <laughs> um, okay. <laughs> but the, the reality is, is that, that if we want to have mentor characters, they need to have interesting plots um, and, and develop them as characters. Yeah. And and people want to be writing those characters, which means you do have to sit there and go, oh yeah, we can totally be flexible with these things. Yep. And I um, think it. I think the part of the problem is is how mentors are in in other media, right? Like if yeah. you think about like your mentor characters, like your Obi Wan's and your Dumbledores and things like that, in their original incarnations, they really don't have an arc and they don't do anything. Yeah. And so, to in our writer brain, we're not thinking of that. And we're thinking like, oh, this doesn't make sense because this isn't their role and this isn't where they, they fit in. Because in stories where we see mentors, they don't have their own arc and they don't do anything. So it feels awkward to say yes to something that fundamentally doesn't make sense in that way. But I think as role players, we have to expand it and think a little bit differently because there is no main characters in role play. So it's just it's just a different dynamic. And I think mentors is one of the ways where that pops up where we are so inundated with how media portrays these characters that we forget some of the elements that need to be present for role play and make that medium different. Yeah. Um, also, like, mentors die. Yeah. I mean, that's what the happens, right? Is that they, in traditional media, they give off their wisdom until they're, until the hero has to be pushed and that final push is their mentor dying. A lot of times. Um, that, is, that is the mentor trope. And um, it's not, it doesn't, it doesn't set up for the mentor to be a main character. And here's the thing is that like when we're RPing, we're all supposed to be main characters. Mm -hmm. um, or all the characters are supposed to be main characters of their own story arc because that's how you keep them interesting. There are certainly some background characters and stuff like that. But for the most part. You want your character to be the main character of their story. Uh, and if their purpose is to die giving information to somebody else, it's really hard to make them a main character. Yep. <laughs> so, yep. Um, yes. Duh. Uncle Uncle Iroh lived. That's true. He did. <laughs> that is true. Uh, I'm so glad that there was one. <laughs> <laughs> But, uh, yeah, I mean, Dumbledore, I mean, I agree with Dishdog, um, and we have conversations about this plan for the future, but uh, Dumbledore wasn't really a mentor, traditional sense, until Half-Blood Prince, but guess what he did in Half-Blood Prince? Done. Yep. A bum. <laughs> <laughs> he fulfilled um, the trope. Yeah, Obi-Wan Kenobi did the same thing yep. in Star Wars. Yep, exactly. Um, and, hell, Uncle Iroh, isn't there a plot in which they did think he was dead? I don't remember. I don't know. I think that they thought he was dead for a little while because I'm pretty sure that Zuko felt guilty about it. And and that pushed Zuko to do the thing that he was supposed to do, which was turn good. Anyway, just wanted to say that that happened. <laughs> um, <laughs> but and yeah, I think mentor one, characters. One other thing on mentor characters that I think is because there is very little... Um, there's very little examples of mentors having their own arc. They actually are like legit challenging to play. Like I think it is hard 
for the person playing that character to think of what they even want to do with that character. So sometimes it's for this particular one, it's not always on like the other person or getting told no. Sometimes it's like legit hard to think of what it is that you want to do with this character to feel satisfied. So I think as role players, one thing that we can do in regards to those mentor characters is if you're going to make a mentor character, this is one trope that is absolutely critical that you make other stuff for that character besides just their mentorship. You know, because if you yeah. don't, then you can get yourself backed into a place where the character's not doing anything and you're feeling unsatisfied. And it's nobody's fault because you're not coming up with plots, you know? If you're not coming up with them, nobody can help, with, help you with them. So uh, this one in particular, I think because of the way that mentors are treated in our media, they just, they actually legit do take extra work, you know? They do. And I mean, I think that that's also important to our next type because I think it's a just a quick hop to our other trope that we want is older characters in general. Yes. Um, you like mentor characters, which I feel, I feel traditionally mentor characters are going to be on the older side. Usually. Um, because of the lived experience, because of that trope. Um, but I think that older characters also need something more because a lot of people aren't going to play on the same level as them. Mm -hmm. You need to have the dynamics figured out, something connecting them. Um, mm -hmm. Whether it be adult children or um, adult children or uh, siblings or anything like that. You need to, I think that before you sign up, you there won't be a lot of activity unless there is something specific that you're trying to aim for and have pre-plotted. Yeah, I think that's unfortunately true with older characters. And you know, a lot of role players are younger. A lot of the stories in our society are centered around like high school and college ages, you know? So we just don't see a huge amount of examples in role play with older characters because they're not, in, unless, <laughs> unless they are just only slightly older, right? Like late thirties and white and kind of dominant men, right? Like those are still fine. But yeah. heaven forbid that you have somebody that's on the more submissive side. Heaven forbid that you have a woman who is an older character. Oh, no. Heaven forbid <laughs> that when you have your older male characters that they actually are old as opposed to just like, oh, I'm so old. I'm 40. You know, heaven forbid anyone play a character in their 50s or 60s. Like, are you who, sure who 40s does that? are old? I'm pretty sure 40 is ancient at this point. In some role plays, it is, you know, in some role plays, it, no, it is. It is, absolutely. Um, um, and I think, I think there's a reluctance to ship with older characters. But you know what? Here's my plea for older characters. Older characters are actually the best because you know what you get with older characters? You get more years to pile on more tragic backstory. Y'all, this, this is what we should be doing. This is the potential of older characters. More tragedy, and we are not taking advantage of it as a community, and I want that to change. But why would you, why would you do tragedy? Why would you pack in tragedy of 15 years of tragic backstory when you could put 15 years of tragic backstory, uh, worth of tragic backstory, in three months in a young character? I mean, I don't know. But you know what, Dish Dog, that is cheating. And we're not talking about, like, vampire characters that look 17 even though they're played by a 30-year-old actor, okay? I mean, like, legit older characters no, yeah. that are we're older and act 50, older. We're talking 50 and older who are going, who are on that stage of life. Yes. <laughs> That's what I want to see. Is, whose life expectancy, half of their life expectancy has already been gone. Like, yes. that's what we're talking about. Yeah, I want that character um, that is actually, like, has their shit figured out for the most so, part in their life. They know what they want to do, and they are working towards it, and, you know, and, and they have, like, a rich history of things that they've done. Like, that's what I want. Very quickly, I just want to bitch for a second about okay. um, the, the trope of being 500 and some odd years old. And looking 30, and also having the attitude and wisdom of a 30-year-old. <laughs> I'm like, 500 years old! Learn your lesson, people! Anyway, that's all I have. Um. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, sometimes sometimes the characters that are supposedly hundreds of years old, and then they're, they still act like teenagers. Yeah. <laughs> that's so funny. I think that, I mean, Edward Cullen. Anyway, um, <laughs> I think that this is, this is something that um 
we as an RP have changed since our conception and, and, and our starting of, of running RPs together. Yeah. And I think that that happened because we are now older. Yeah. As we uh, grew we up, started, our characters grew up. Yeah. When we were started, I was 19 and you were, you were in your mid twenties. And yep. so like, there was this idea of, of like age is whatever. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and um, that everyone dies at 30. And that's not true. <laughs> people don't die at 30. People, nope. people live very, 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 very long lives. And um, so as we've gotten older, there's been an acceptance of being like, oh no, 50 year olds are okay. Yeah. Um, 60 year olds are even okay. We, we're still lacking on the 70 year olds, but 50 and 60 year olds we've reached out to. And, and I think consistently have a few of those in that area. And yeah. also consistently have characters in their 40s without we referring do. to them at all. We do, but that was not always the case. And I don't think that's the case no. in the larger role play sphere. Like, um, like Erica has a good comment. I have that happen in GOT RPs, Game of Thrones RPs all the time. Everyone plays young 20s. Who the hell is playing young 20s in a Game of Thrones RP? That makes no sense. And yet, I believe her, you know? Oh, 100%. <laughs> Absolutely. And do you know why? Because young 20s by society is what tells us what we aim to be. Yeah. People want to be young. They want to be hot. They want to be attractive. They want to be like have a lot of vitality. And media explains that that age has all of that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, whereas it's not true. You have all of that throughout the entirety of your life, depending on the kind of person and character you are. For sure. I mean, I'm, I'm so. living my best life now at 34, right? Yeah, um, I'm, and, I, and I don't God. think I'm alone in that. And I am certainly not like, a, you know, an old person at 27. But dear Lord, my upper 20s have been so much better than my young 20s. Yeah. <laughs> like anybody at this point who wants to write in their young 20s and that be considered old because we still go to get those apps where it's like 21 is not old people. Um, <laughs> yeah. And I think, okay, so we can talk a second about that. So for anybody that is going to, that feels inspired to this and wants to push older characters in their role plays that, you know, that's running role plays. One thing we have experienced is especially with younger role players or people more used to playing lots of younger characters, they do struggle to understand. And we mm -hmm. get like whatever the in-universe equivalent of I'm a 22 year old CEO. No, my friend, you are not. No, you are not. That is not a thing. Um, you know, so so if you are going to start to push for older characters, um, then understand that's going to change the jobs available in your role play. And people are going to still put their younger characters into those slots. And you're going to have to have those conversations yeah. about those things. No, it's 100% your job to sit there and be like, um, I'm sorry, unless you're running an MLM. You're not CEO. <laughs> boss babe, boss babe. <laughs> I'm my so, own CEO. <laughs> I definitely think having those those older characters is something that we should strive for to have uh, in our piece. Yeah, 100%. 100%. More older characters. More room for tragedy. It's just, it's only a good thing, right? <laughs> yeah. Now, I put this next trope. Um, kind of just wanting to talk about it. Not necessarily because of us but because of of uh other rps and that's mm -hmm. an idea of younger characters mm. um but i was more thinking of like well-developed younger characters <gasps> i feel like that there's a lot of there's a lot of young characters that are very um when we get something someone who's apping for 18 19 20 year olds um they're very bland um and of the same sort of I'm so special, pick me, sort of vibe. Mm. Um, and do you I mean like want you to... want to see more like realistic teenagers, like I that do. actually behave like teenagers? More, yeah, I want to see more realistic teenagers. I want to see people write young characters who are allowed to make mistakes and learn and grow from their mistakes purposefully, um, as people would in their 18 to young 20s. Mm -hmm. um, instead of being like, oh, I am going to be CEO by the time I'm 21 years old. <laughs> uh, because I do feel that that happens then is that like when we accept younger characters, we get characters who are like, God, you're doing so much. <laughs> 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 so, 
Please yeah, stop. Yeah, we see that it's sometimes. Not um, yeah. You're not good at everything. Um, so yeah, that's my, I put that there because I wanted to see that. But I also wanted to talk about, I mean, there are some RPs that do have young, younger characters, like teenagers, um, especially in school RPs, that uh, I think developing those to be realistic rather than the trope is something that I would, I would encourage people to maybe exercise. Yeah. Um, because I'm really, and I maybe, maybe this is just a critique on media, but I'm really tired of seeing teenagers who don't act like teenagers. I think we I'm, see that I'm, a lot, like, right? Like we see teenagers that are like, act like 20 somethings, you know? Yeah, and I know I mean, that as a teenager, even... you want to be a 20 something. So I totally yeah. see like where it comes from, but once you get to a certain age and you look back and you're like, this is so cringe. Yeah. <laughs> or, or like, like looking at, I mean, and, and Shadow just, or Dish Dog just said it, like looking at media stuff that you have, you have people who are 30 years old playing teenagers on TV and in movies. Yeah. Um, and acting like they're in their mid 20s. And, and, and I know, like, obviously storytelling in media and that they're the protagonists, so you want to cheer for them and for them to be right and all of that. But I really do want to see in stories some... I want to see, I guess maybe this is just a call for letting young people make mistakes in stories. Mm -hmm. um, your 19-year-old does not always have to be perfect. They are not always right because there is no 19-year-old that is always right. Um, oh God, no. <laughs> there is no 19 year old that is right most of the time it doesn't work <laughs> um, and I, I'd love to see that develop a little bit more in a lot of our piece yeah I would too I would too I mean it's a fantasy at the end of the day so I totally understand like why and how that happens but we just don't we just don't see it we don't see teenagers acting like teenagers in role yes. play or in other media and um, and I do think that that's an area that we could definitely do better at uh, as role players and as a community. Yep, I think that that would be a good way. And like you said, yeah, I know it's a fantasy, and so I'm not calling anybody out or saying people have to play it differently. But personally, on the personal level, I would love to just see it played differently. Yeah, just more examples of it. You know, more examples of like a, a real a real teenager instead of a um, you know instead of a a, a fantasy version of what being a teenager is you know yeah exactly yeah um uh oh yeah ty says they don't have to be a 19 year old with ceo skills they can be a 19 year old who likes hanging out at the mall after school and is trying to figure out what they want to be do with their lives absolutely give me stories like that because i feel like that that's so much better than like I'm working three jobs <laughs> and, <laughs> and perfect at everything and haven't made yeah. any mistakes and I'm going to marry my boyfriend. Like, <laughs> sorry. Well, it's just, it's just those, it's just one of those things I think that's like, because we've been role playing for so long and we've seen it so much, we're just tired of seeing it, Yeah. you know, just tired of seeing it. And so like, it would be a breath of fresh air to see the realistic young person. We're the grumpy, we're the grumpy old people now. <laughs> um, oh all right. Our last one, because it is it is on the 145 hour minute time, whatever. I'm at that point in the stream where I'm just like, time is irrelevant. It's 145. <laughs> um, so I want to just mention one thing, and we talked a lot about this, but well-developed women characters. Yeah. Uh, I'd like to see more of that trope. <laughs> yeah. Um, because it's fantasy land, I think there is like, there is like this desire to just play like the damsel in distress or the Bella Swan or, you know, play these tropes. But, but it would just be nice if, cause most role players are women or most narrative role places, role play spaces are filled with women. And yet we repeat all of the sexism and misogyny that we are subjected to and don't develop our own characters. And I think that's sad and we could do better. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I and I someone said it earlier, so it was way back in the chat, so I don't think I can find it. Um, but this idea of of women not being um, oh my god, I lost it. I had the quote. I'm so sorry. It's okay. Um, you can take a second. No, it was just it was about like oh women just being not a certain type. Like you see a certain type 
in um in in rp and women aren't that they have to like being able to write a badass woman is super rare in our oh, not yeah, yeah yeah but it's it's not as common in rp um and it's then like played as this thing that people don't want to play with her unless there is a unless they're being used like that's the other thing too is that you get a lot of these tropes that you fight this idea of what of the misogyny of how women are portrayed in literature and media you fight it you play a different character no one wants to play with that woman Mm -hmm. um because that's just how it is (laughs) Mm -hmm. and that's really hard yeah it is really hard it is for sure Um, i agree with that but like i would i would prefer that if we were able to write more well-rounded diverse women i think that it would be really cool to see in rps and i think it would it would give people an outlet that i'm not sure that they even know exist yet Mm -hmm. so are there any other tropes that you wanted to discuss particularly um as far as what we wish we saw more of um no i think that's it so shout out for our sexism episode if you want to hear yeah. the comment that comments that we were just making if you want to hear like a whole thing on that we have a, a whole episode about sexism in role play that you can find on my youtube channel um we have a whole episode on villains we talked about that that you can find on my youtube channel uh so you know if if those sorts of things interested you then um we have a whole two hours on just that where you can get a lot more in-depth opinions from us on all of those things um very quickly i wanted to dish dog just asked a question okay so as a guy who is mostly quoting nikki here a mostly female muse what would you guys suggest for ensuring it isn't cringe um i really think that like (laughs) Yeah, this is a great question. So we do have a whole sexism episode where we we endeavor to answer answer some of this. So I would recommend going and watching that. But quickly here today, what I think I usually see with with guys that are playing women characters that they really screw up is honestly, it's like the sex scenes. Like, I think what a lot of men don't understand and my my understanding of this is it has a lot to do with the way that estrogen affects the body versus the way testosterone affects the body. Um, women really don't think about sex in the same way or attraction in the same way. It really is different. And, um, and the reason why I feel like I, I, why I'm saying that is because I've also noticed a lot of trans people who go through transition and, you know, get on hormone therapy, uh, especially trans women, right, that are getting on estrogen, talk about how that changed the way that their attraction and sexuality worked. So that's like the big thing that I really see guys screwing up. Like it's it's the flirting scenes and the sex scenes. They're just not right. <laughs> and I would encourage you to kind of like look at some of those examples. Um, you know, read uh, read some some smut and romance written by women. And, um, and I think accounts of what trans women go through when they go on hormone therapy and how that changed the way that they felt, I think are helpful as well. Cause they can speak it, speak of it from like how they used to feel versus how they felt like, you know, post hormone therapy. Um, that would be my advice for that. And what I typically see screwing up, like it's, it's most things like women and men aren't, I don't think are super different, but when it comes to those things, there are definite differences, and I see it in the writing of men. I think also, um, I I think, and this is not just a plea for men who write women. I think that this is a plea for people who write women characters in general. Um, there is a trope and an idea that a whole woman's reality exists around finding love or a relationship or companionship um and that's what we've been taught as a society and that's not necessarily true um i can count on one hand (laughs) the amount of women uh whose entire focus in life is to find a husband um and uh it's it's one finger (laughs) 
<laughs> that's it. Um, and so being being aware of that, and I don't know what kind of RP you're doing. So if you're doing more like fighting style, then um, I, I guess for me, it's at least from my perspective, it's not that different, except for um, making sure that it, you don't fuse on to another character. Uh, women tend to get lost or fuse on or attach in RPs and in writing um, where they become one half of a dynamic rather than a fully developed character themselves. And I, yeah. would, I would strongly suggest that if possible, making sure that you keep that at autonomy and not just blend in with somebody else. That would be Yeah, I think that's true. Idea. Make sure she has friends and family, not just, you know, not just a, a boyfriend or spouse or whatever. Yeah, and um, and that like, and even if that is a friend or family, making sure that 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 she isn't over sh like, it's hard to explain, but I think it's like this idea that that women tend to shadow around other women or other people, uh, in media. That especially like if you're uncomfortable writing a woman character, that you don't know how to have those interactions, and just know that like women don't shadow they don't actually that they still exist in in relation to other people if that mm -hmm. makes sense so yep. yeah um yeah oh shadow that's a great quote behind every strong man is a strong woman um do not do that because that's not true <laughs> i mean it is uh it, it is it is but it's also not anything. but that's like but the like, trope right that's the trope you are, yeah when you are playing a woman, do not strive to be the woman behind every man. Uh, yeah. Because no one, no woman, as far as I'm aware, strives to be the woman behind every man. Not really. Uh, I mean, even even the women that I know, even the women that I know whose, like, life goal is, you know, get married and support yeah. a husband and have kids and whatever. And if that's your life goal, that's fine. Like, it's whatever. You do you. Yeah. Um, but, uh, but, like, even the women that I know that that is their life goal and that is what they're interested in. Like, that's not their whole thing. And I think, they, I do think that sometimes in writing, it can become their whole thing a little yeah. too easily. Yeah, they don't describe themselves as the woman behind a strong man. Uh, I do, <laughs> like, even for me, all the women that are in relationships or whose life wants to be a stay-at-home mom, 50s housewife, whatever, would not describe themselves as the strong woman behind a strong man. They no. would just be a strong woman. <laughs> um, and so I think that that's something that is very easily overshadowed. Yeah, it should still be at the bottom of your of the chat, Jane. Um, if anybody's on mobile that can be more specific with Jane, help her out. I'm not 100% sure because I typically don't watch Twitch on mobile, but it should be at the bottom I'm of the chat. I don't know how to do it on mobile. I'm so sorry. Yeah. It should be an icon <sighs> still, just like there is on the on the PC. Yeah, good question. Yeah, that's a great question. All right. We ready for the good news article? Yes, I will save the game. Hit me. Hit me with that good news. Oh, I'll hit you right in the face. Just kidding. Ah, <laughs> so long that. as it's good news. <laughs> All right. All right. Put to desktop. There we go. Okay. Come on, article. Okay, there we go. So the article today is Villagers went without streetlights for 45 days to help a bird and a hatchling. Oh my gosh! That's so long! 45 days! 45 whole days! That's a very pretty bird, too. Um, I found the village, but I do not know what country it's in. So, um, let me, I'm trying to do a quick Google search for that. Uh, but yeah, so basically, um, these villagers, so there was a robin that, um, had started to build a nest. Oh, it's in India. It's in Southern India. Okay. Right in the first, my goodness gracious. <laughs> um, <laughs> who built her nest in a very, uh, extremely inconvenient location um, so there's about 120 homes and a total of 35 streetlights in this small town or small village. And the, she, the mama bird decided to set up her net nest in the town's main lighting switchboard. 
So not even like oh. in the light, but in the switchboard itself. Oh no, um, bad choice, and, bird. <gasps> yes, and so uh, this person was tasked, this man was tasked to turn on the straight lights every single evening because they only do it at night, and obviously, and um, and he loves birds. He's been a, a lifelong bird lover, and uh, that basically decided not to switch on the lights. <laughs> <laughs> and, well <laughs> um and because uh the bird will be flying once and then realize that there was a human that touched the nest and touched the eggs and would abandon this nest and eggs and might not brood so um and just wanted to make sure that this that this bird had a an opportunity to uh reproduce and so she did and 45 days had a had a baby and her chicks and then they finally took off and now oh that they're alive again that's so nice i'm so glad they were able to help that little bird out poor poor birds they're uh they're dumb you know that was a bad place to build your nest bird but i understand you probably i'm assuming you didn't have other options and that's why you did that silly thing <laughs> but i'm glad yeah. they were able to help it out oh I hope um, if that happened in my neighborhood, we could come together and do the same thing. Who needs streetlights anyway? Yeah, I mean, honestly, they're just a waste of time. Yeah, (laughs) right? Who needs them? Gosh. Who needs them? (laughs) All right, guys. Okay, so that's our good news article for today. Some nice good news. Mm. All right, let's switch back to webcams. All right, guys. So that is the end for Interstage Window. Um, Today we talked about, you know, characters that we'd like to see more of and kind of some of the the broad points that we made in our representation episode, in our sexism episode, in our playing characters that are not like you episode, in our villains episode. We've had so many of these episodes we've done deep dives, but we just (laughs) wanted to kind of like put it all together for you guys so that you would have an outlet to feel inspired to play some of those characters that we don't get to see quite so much in role play. Um, So with that being said, Landon, where can everybody find you? You can find me on Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter at Land in Maine, L A N D I N. It's a pun. Um, and yeah, that's it. There's been nothing really going on on uh, any of those platforms, but they exist. And so please, <laughs> please come stalk me anyway. Um, I had a couple. I had a couple people find my TikTok the other night, so it has been nothing but like likes, like mass likes through all of my videos. And I'm like. Ugh. I love you people. Jane, That's especially. So nice. Katie, you too. <laughs> That's so nice. That's so nice. I love it. Um, so, um, and I have then, a feeling, I have a feeling you'll get active again in the summer. Probably. Yeah. It's, we'll see when I have time to breathe. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. And then that's all I got. So where can they find you, Karen, Terry? All right. So I'm popping my socials into the chat. Um, you can find me right here, of course, on Twitch. We do our stream on Saturdays, Interstage Window. Oh, thank you for the how lunar. Thank you for those bits. Um, I know it's lunar. I don't even have to look, right? No, it was Katie. It was Katie. I was wrong. Wow. I assumed. Sorry, Katie. Oh. I let lunar steal your thunder. I shouldn't have done that. Thank you, Katie, for the howl. We'll pretend those last 30 seconds didn't happen. <laughs> Um, so yeah, you can find me right here on Twitch. We have Interstage Window on Saturdays from about noon to about 2 Eastern, and that is my conversation. Landon is my co-host, is here almost every episode, and sometimes we have guests. And actually, next week, we are going to have a guest. Y'all, we got a spicy topic next week, so you definitely want to show up for this, okay? Sasha's going to be back, so you know it's good. If It's, it's going to be spicy as hell if Sasha's here, right? The topic... We're- yeah, is, I'm reading a book for this. <laughs> yes, y'all. The topic is online abuse in role plays. Yeah, get ready, okay. get ready. Yes. It's gonna be spicy. It's gonna be spicy. Get ready. So yes, I was um, very scared that I wasn't gonna be able to make it, but we made it work. So, but it worked out. It worked out. It's all good. Yeah. Elena's gonna be there too. So that's what we're going to be talking about next week. Um, We also have Artistic License, which is my Thursday stream. That's mostly by myself. It's not really a conversation. It's just me hanging out with you guys. And next week, we're going to get back on Final Fantasy X. Oof, indeed, Brie. That's right. Um, We're going to get back on Final Fantasy X, and we are um, going to be playing some more of that. 
coming up. Last week we did a nail art stream. That's why my nails look absolutely crazy. Like I'll show them to you guys. They're beautiful. Thank you. Oh, there's Lunar's Hell. There's Lunar's Hell. Yeah, we did how to cheat at free painting last Thursday. Um, so I'm I'm not a very good like painter of actual design. So I showed you guys some cheats, and no one's ever going to get that close to your nails anyway. So you can use those cheats to make like simple designs and stuff like that without having to like constantly do and redo and redo your nails. So you can do it a lot faster, a lot easier. So go check that out. Check out the VOD on my channel if you're interested in that. Um, yeah. And then of course we have my YouTube show, which is Spare Room, goes up on YouTube every Saturday at no every Wednesday at 2 p.m. Um, however, because of everything that's been going on with, um, me getting COVID and my roommate getting COVID and being hospitalized and all that stuff, it's actually going on a short hiatus. So we are going to have an episode next week, but then after that, Spare Room's going to take a two week hiatus because I just have to catch up on production. Production has not happened with everything going on. So two week hiatus for that. Um, and then I also have Twitter and TikTok. Those are my two socials. Uh, it's mostly advertisements, but, uh, Twitter also has hot takes and TikTok also has silly stuff if you guys are interested in that the tiktok again no content there the past couple weeks because they've been crazy but i'm gonna hop back on that soon so you'll want to be following that if you want to see some more tiktoks and that's all the places that you can find yeah and then i also want to just say if anyone has any topics for shows and stuff like that, that they want to recommend we're always listening so yeah please do yeah so let us know okay so right. let's find someone to raid let's find someone raid, to raid, raid. Raid, 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 raid. Raid. I don't know what that sound was, but it was a sound. <laughs> <laughs> Lunar's playing. Lunar's playing the violin for a little for a little um spare room hiatus. I assume that's what that's for. Thank you, Lunar. <laughs> it just it's just like that sometimes, you know. Life gets All right, in the way. You understand? We are gonna we are gonna raid my friend um Skitty Cat because they are doing a subathon and they're playing Beat Saber, which I find um, ridiculously entertaining. So we're gonna go watch Skitty play some Beat Saber. Sounds sounds good. All right, guys, raid is commencing. We're gonna be hopping in there really soon. Um, I will see you guys later. Thank you guys so much for watching. Bye, y'all. Don't forget to be awesome. All right, and don't forget to make it a great day.